Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you and everybody there in the in the in the Zoom call online. It's so good to be here, remembering the truth of ourselves. Always, let us start um, with a prayer that I told you. It's going to be in Spanish. That I always start my services saying, abro mi corazón al amor, which is... <laughs> Her translator. <laughs> I open my heart to love. Abro mi mente a Dios. I open my mind to God. Mi alma es una con todo el universo. My soul is one with the whole universe. And we, I feel inspired to start with the prayer of Saint Teresa of Avila. The original prayer was in Spanish. Okay, I'm going to read it in English, but then I'm going to say it uh, in Spanish exactly as the way she she wrote it. It's, it's, it's a long prayer, but it's the first verses make a prayer itself. It says, okay, before reading that, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and feel these words in your heart and receive them. It says, let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you, all things pass away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone Suffice. suffices. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. In Spanish it says, Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Todo se pasa. Dios no se muda. La paciencia todo lo alcanza. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Solo Dios basta. Solo Dios basta. Solo Dios basta. Amén, amén, and amén. I memorized that because we started all of our services with that prayer when we were in Miami. Three times, okay. yes. My mentor in in the in the ministerial school, she she did that every time she did a prayer, and I just every time I pray, I do that. Amen, amen, and amen. So in the ministerial school, I feel like like three times. Good question. Esther Mantilla, Reverenda Esther Mantilla, which is the minister at Unity Church in Santurce, Puerto Rico. She was my mentor when I was at the ministerial school. And then when we were in Miami, we had a five-year-old in the, in the audience. And whenever he felt something was done properly, he would shout out, y punto which means, and period. And period. I mean, he <laughs> would say it with all his heart. So whenever, heart. whenever there was a dramatic moment and everybody was all calm and it was, it was, everybody got centered and there you hear this five-year-old yell out, y punto. Y punto. <laughs> <laughs> it was so beautiful. My husband and I were talking yesterday about how wonderful it is to be here in this community of Namaste Village because it reminds us constantly the importance of being centered in prayer. In the morning, we start with prayer, and then we have every day, six days, and we have meditations, we have prayers in, uh, during the afternoon classes, um, even my dance class that we started yesterday, we do it with sacred music, with music that reminds us the presence of the divine. So this is a constant reminder. And then we walk around and we see all these 
beautiful paintings and murals. That's murals. A, murals. Where it's a constant reminder of, of uh, the divine that is everywhere in us and all around us. So it's beautiful. And each one of you <laughs> reminds us of the face of Christ because you are the face of Christ. So it's beautiful here. Could you please read to us the daily word for today? Yes, I say it with pleasure. Today's daily word is release. My heart is light as I release old thoughts and practices. When I clean out my closet, I let go of what I no longer want or need. Putting my things in order helps me feel free and gives me a feeling of possibility. I remember this feeling when I consider my life's path. I may discover that I want to leave certain behaviors or ways of thinking behind. As I release old thoughts or habits that no longer serve me, I open to new ways of being, to joy and peace, to purpose and fulfillment. I feel liberated and energized. Letting go feels good and immediately lightens my spirit. I release old burdens that weigh me down. I let go of feelings that bind me to the past. I feel healed in my mind, body, and soul. I am ready to move forward with a light and peaceful heart. And from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 40, verse 4, I have just released you today from the fetters of your hand, on your hands. And when I was reading that this morning, it reminded me of this from Matthew 11, 29, 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. This is Jesus saying, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> Talking about thank you, Mr. Jimenez, Mr. Johannes. Thank you, Senor Johannes. Senor Johannes. <laughs> Um, they're talking about gentleness with us. I live a gentleman, gentleman, brother Jonathan, who is so gentle in spirit and loving and kind. Brother Jonathan is going to share uh, today uh, with us. We have the blessing of having him and I'm going to read a little bit. This is just a little bit of all the things that he has done and continue doing through his life. Brother Jonathan has been a brother in religious life for a total of 15 years. He is a brother with a religious order called the Community of the Mother of Jesus. He has worked as a substance abuse counselor and most recently at a treatment center for homeless mothers where he helps them with job skills and to become job ready. Brother Jonathan also managed a state government program for eight years where they advocated for people with disabilities and trained employers how to provide accommodations for people with disabilities. In his religious order, they all serve people who are in need. And it is with great pleasure that I present to you our beloved brother, Jonathan. Jonathan, hi. Hello, thank you so much, my dear friend. I, I wish I could be with you all today. I had to come back to my home in Chicago this past weekend, uh, but uh, I'm so glad I could participate this way. I hope you can all hear me okay. Yes, we can. Okay, good, you. we're good. Um, like, like, my dear friend Johannes said, I have been in religious life for 15 years, a total of 15 years, 
first in a monastery, you know, where you were cloistered in a monastery and now uh, with the community of the Mother of Jesus, where we work out in the world. Um, so a lot of people ask, what is a brother? And I just tell them, well, I'm like a male nun, okay? <laughs> and so that explains it pretty well. Um, in our order, like I said, like she said, it's the community of the mother of Jesus, but everything, any devotion to Mary that we have always points to Christ, okay? Um, and so I would like to, we have a, a rule that we all follow. Uh, Johannes is familiar with any religious order, always has a rule. And so we have a rule that has 30 points to it. And I would like to read just the first six to you. If anyone like, would like to see all 30 points, uh, I would be glad to send it to you. So each day make everything you do think or say a prayer to God so that you can be attentive to God breaking into your day. They often, I am your servant, O Lord. Let it be done to me as you say. Practice the virtue of humility so that you can walk each day with God. Go in loving service to the lowly, the hungry, and those who cannot see the holiness of God. Greet the needy and the lowly with joy in your soul so that the Holy Spirit may also fill them and uphold them. Practice the virtue of justice and find joy in God your Savior. So those are just the first six points of our rule that we follow and meditate on every day. What I wanted to talk about today is those times in our lives when we may not feel close to God, when, when we just feel nothing, when we feel God is absent in our life, I think we all need to admit, at least I do, that that happens sometimes. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Reverend, jo uh, Reverend Johannes talked about St. Teresa of Avila, and my patron saint is St. Therese of Lisieux, also of the same order, the Carmelites. She experienced this absence of God for most of her life in the convent. She lived from... 1873 to 1897, only 24 years, she entered the convent at the age of 15, and she was in the convent for only nine years. She experienced this dryness of heart for most of her time in the convent. She called it aridity, and it comes from the word arid, like desert life. Uh, um, a dryness of the heart. Before the, she died of tuberculosis. She contracted it 15 months before she died, and she lived with that, and it became progressively worse and worse and worse, and she suffered tremendously from uh, tuberculosis. At one point, the priest gave her last rites because her, all of her intestines had become gangrenous and she was on her deathbed, but yet she lived for another month and a half in this state. And at a couple of points, she said, I no longer believe, I no longer believe in the afterlife. But the thing is, in this suffering, she, through, though she felt abandoned by God, she felt solidarity with the suffering Christ. 
the, the Christ who was on the cross and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I think when we feel this absence of God, that there is beauty to find in finding solidarity with the Christ who often, who also experienced the same thing. The thing is that although she experienced this lack of faith, she still performed uh, acts of faith. Even though she did not have faith there for a while, she still performed acts of faith. She still followed the rule of her monastery. She was so benevolent to all of her sisters. She was commanded by the superior of the monastery to write memories of her family. And so she started, even though she was very ill and in pain, she started writing memories of her family. And it turned into an autobiography that they discovered after she died. And this autobiography was titled Story of a Soul. And it was published and immediately uh, became like a bestseller in 1897 and just went across the world and her spiritual insights were so profound and so so creative and inspirational and unique so much so that she was uh she was proclaimed a saint by 1925 and in 1997 she was proclaimed a doctor of the church so she is one of the few women to be proclaimed a doctor of the church. And like I said, I've studied her quite a bit. I, I've written some research papers about her. And um, I remember when she was proclaimed a doctor of the church, I was uh, in my religious order in New York City, and I was at St. Patrick's Cathedral when she was proclaimed a doctor of the church. Like I said, she still performed acts of faith. And I think that is so important for us to remember when we don't feel consolation from God to still perform acts of faith. When I think of someone who did that, I think of my grandmother. Everyone called her Budgie. <laughs> and <laughs> she she got the name Budgie from her youngest daughter, who just her first daughter, who still who started her calling her that. They don't know where it came from, but everybody in my hometown uh, can remember Budgie, my little hometown of Goliad, Texas, in South Texas, uh, like seventeen hundred people. And I I will bet that. If I go onto Facebook right after this and put on one little memory of Budgie, or even just say the name Budgie, that there will be all these comments afterward of all the memories of Budgie. She passed away in 2002 at the age of 92. Um, the thing is, the reason I'm bringing up Budgie is that she had a very difficult life. If there is anyone who could be bitter or not performing acts of faith or acts of service, it would be Budgie. She was orphaned at the age of 18 months. Her mother died and her father abandoned her and her brother. And so they were sent to live with her grandmother and grandfather who already had 11 children and lots of relatives living in this very poor, poor farmhouse. Um, so she was an orphan from an early age, living on a very poor, uh, poor environment with, I think, a grandmother who really did not want to take her in. Her grandmother was abusive toward her. Uh, she was so close to her brother, who she was 
uh, who she was raised with, who was just two years older. And her brother was killed in a quarry accident when Baji was 18 years old. Uh, she went on to live in San Antonio, Texas, and became got a job as a telephone operator in when she was 18. Uh, she married then, but her husband turned out to be um, an alcoholic and also very unfaithful to the marriage. So Budgie had a hard life. Her husband died in 1969 when I was 10 years old, and that's when my parents divorced. So uh, my brother and I, we were raised by Budgie and we were, uh, and my mother. And so I was lucky enough to have Budgie as a parent since the age of 10. And so it was just an incredible experience. Like I said, she was the most loving, happy, warm, giving person you would ever want to meet. And so I am so lucky to have her. The thing is her whole life was built around serving others she still she performed these acts of faith and it had a profound effect on her like i said i'm going to mention budgie on my facebook page right after this and and i those of you who i'm facebook friends with take a look just later today and look at the comments of memories of her like I said, she was just so loving and she was a devout Christian. She taught Sunday school for over 45 years. And I had her as a Sunday school teacher when I was little. And uh, like I said, I was lucky enough to be raised by her. She, um, she and I were so very close when uh, we loved to write letters to each other and um uh, so especially while i was in the monastery we wrote to each other so very often and i'm so lucky of that and i'd like to show you something real quick here i kept her letters and <laughs> over 800 letters from from budgie and with all these wor funny words of wisdom, she was so funny. And like I said, just the, the most incredible person you would want to meet. I wish you all could meet her, but I, I was so lucky to have her as a parent. Um, I picked out just one letter last night and read it from her, uh, read it. And in that letter, she talked about that she was about to go and give a retirement party for someone in my hometown from her church. And it was on Budgie's birthday, but she didn't tell them it was her birthday, but she gave a retirement party for someone. In that same letter, she was also helping with the fire department's fundraiser with a hot dog supper. <laughs> and this was in one letter. I remember another letter of hers she had a friend who she called Doodlebug. And so she was always going out to help Doodlebug. And she would go and to the nurse, local nursing home and visit with people. And uh, she worked as the church hostess. You know, when they had a church supper, we call them covered dish suppers. And so she was always in charge of the covered dish supper, which was on a Wednesday night once a month. And she often said, when I die, I hope to go to heaven in a covered dish. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, she was so funny and she was a wonderful seamstress. Uh, she and her husband owned a, a dry cleaning store, the local dry cleaning store. And she did all the alterations on one of those old fashioned pedal sewing machines. And she would sit out front and watch people come in and out. And she would be in front in the window doing all the alter eight alterations. And she would mend all of our clothes. And like I said, it was a small town. And so, 
<laughs> she was so funny. She said, since she did all the alterations for so many people in town, she said, I know the inseam of every man in this town. <laughs> <laughs> she also had all of these fun sayings like if you ain't loving you ain't living mm -hmm. and then she would say and that comes from the first book of budgie <laughs> and like from the first book of the bible and she was so happy and when she would get happy she would just get tears in her eyes and she would say i'm so happy it's just coming out my eyes mm -hmm. and Whenever you would go to see her, she would just run at you with her arms out. So there again, she, oh, <laughs> one other time she lived, uh, she worked full time well into her 80s. Uh, after she sold a dry cleaning store, she became a tour guide at the local Spanish mission. You know, we lived near San Antonio, Texas. So we had a Spanish mission in our town and she worked as a tour guide full time until she was probably about 85 years old. And uh, she, uh, she was a devout Southern Baptist. And I remember watching her give the tour in the Spanish mission. And she would point to the crucifix on the in the on the Spanish mission, and she would say, "Now you can tell this is a Catholic cross because it has a Jesus on it." <laughs> so, I was so lucky to have her as a parent and have her as an influence in my life. So she exemplifies that even though we go through affliction and suffering in our life that we can if we serve that that leads to hope and that leads to love like saint therese of lisieux who experienced this aridity this dryness of the heart and felt abandoned by god she became a saint she often said, it doesn't rely on me. I just rely on God to carry me in, in his arms and lift me up and to become a saint. So I think that's what's important is that to acknowledge that yes, we do experience these times when we feel abandoned by God or when we suffer but we can find solidarity with the suffering Christ who also said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So I will always look to St. Therese and to my budgie, uh, who was such a wonderful influence in my life. So let's remember that, that when we feel abandoned by God or feel that dryness of the heart to keep on serving because it does lead to hope and also brings love in our life. So thank you so much, my dear friend, Johannes. Let us always continue to serve. Amen. Wow, what a beautiful story. Thank you, Brother Jonathan. It is so good to hear the, the heart of different people because we all have something to share. We all have this beautiful way of connecting with that presence that we call God. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Jonathan, for sharing that beautiful story and i would like to hear from vicky vicky be beloved one what do you have to say about this story that our beloved brother just shared with us oh johannes thank you so much and brother jonathan <laughs> thank you thank you thank you this is like um a cavalcade of christ's stars tuning in every day to Namaste, 
to hear the Christ speak, to hear, you know, to hear each of us, Brother, Brother Jonathan, Johannes, um, Jack, everyone comfortable in their skin as the living Christ. That's what we're witnessing. And we're witnessing that our divinity is love. The nature of God's presence is love. It gives itself freely to whoever and whatever is in front of it. And that's the example that um, your beloved Budgie gave to all of us. And you, you, Brother Jonathan, you are that. You can see the twinkle in your eyes, all of it. But and just like everything else, we can hear things, we can read things, but it's the example and the vibration of love that we feel that connects us, that teaches us. Mm -hmm. So you have brought that forth. And every day, Johannes, all of us bring that forth. You know, whether we speak or whether we listen, we are singing one song of agreement that we truly are as God created us. And as the beings that we are, the divine beings of light, of love, it is our joy to greet one another and to help one another, whoever's in front of us. That's, that's really, and I love the, the rule of your order, to greet one another with joy because it does establish joy in the one that we greet because love is contagious. So thank you for asking me and thank you for the honor of joining in this chorus of God's love. No matter what we think, what we think doesn't matter. When we fall into loving wherever and whenever we can as a way of life, we are living in God and God is living in us. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. The beauty of sharing our own way of experiencing God. Um, what about Teddy? Teddy, do you want to share something? I haven't heard you from for a while. Tell us something beautiful from that beautiful heart that I'm you are. Not, I'm not <laughs> sure I can say anything after Brother Jonathan. Um, you know, the, the two things that I recognize is, you know, knowing Jesus his recognition that is that it doesn't matter what you do here or don't do here, you're still holy as God created you. Mm -hmm. And in the recognition that we know what holiness is, you know, we have the ability to see that in our brothers, even if they don't seem to be doing or acting in a holy way. Um, and, and the other thing is, and this isn't to say what Brother Jonathan said wasn't useful. I think one of the things that the Course does also is Jesus sort of corrects the idea that he ever said, why hast thou forsaken me? Um, I think he says, unless they had known God as I did, they would never have quoted me as saying, God forsake me, forsook me. And because he can't, we can sort of turn away from the realization and the alignment with God in ourselves. But there's no way that God can forsake us. Um, we do that to ourselves, which is, you know, the teaching of the Course. I do, I but do this to myself. And that's where the recognition of our own power, based on what God has created us to be, comes from. Um, so, but, I mean, you can't beat that for a story, but Brother Jonathan, that's all I can say. And by thank the way, I lived in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I think we all are ready for our prayer for protection. So thank you again, Brother Jonathan, Vicky, Terry, Jack, Roby, all of you there, may you have a beautiful, blessed, holy rest of the day. And let's do together our prayer pro for protection. We take a deep breath. If you feel comfortable, so let's stand up and we say together, the light of God surrounds us. 
I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. We love you too. Thank you. Wonderful stories. Stories.